Hi everyone, it's Professor Crimpton. In this video, we're going to talk about an application of curve sketching. So in the previous video, we talked about a summary of the steps to sketch a graph of the function using the first and second derivatives and also including all the relevant information about the graph of the function, including local extremum, inflection points, where the function is increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, if there were any horizontal or vertical asymptotes, and also any x and y intercepts. In this video, we're going to finish up with an example that will apply the techniques of curve sketching with an application problem involving total cost and average cost functions. So let's pick up where we left off. Another application of curve sketching is analyzing the behavior of a graph of a function. This can be very helpful in understanding the relationship between the average cost and the marginal cost functions as described in the following example. So example three, graph of the average cost per year function. The total cost of buying and serving a machine in dollars after t years is given by the function c of t is 3,200 plus 250 times t plus 50 times t squared and t must be greater than or equal to one. Sketch the graph of the average cost per year function and determine how long it will take for the average cost function per year to be at a minimum and what is the minimum average cost per year. So one important thing that we need to realize before we start using the summary for curve sketching techniques is that we need to graph the average cost function. C of t is not the average cost function. This is just the cost function. So we need to construct the average cost function first. So C bar of x was average cost function it was defined as c of x all divided by x, or cost function divided by x. So it's c bar of t in this case. It's c of t divided by t. So take the cost function c of t, 3,200 plus 250 times t plus 50 times t squared, and divide everything by t. And keep in mind that t must be greater than or equal to 1. So step 1 in the curve sketching guidelines is find the domain of the function. So find the domain of the average cost function c bar of t. Notice that the function is undefined whenever the denominator is zero. So that means t cannot be zero. But the domain was given to us in the problem. So t equals zero is not a problem because we're only interested in t values that are greater than or equal to one. So the domain for the function is square bracket on one because we want to include t equals one up to infinity. There is a vertical asymptote at t equals zero because that's what makes the denominator zero. But again, t equals zero is not part of the domain. So there are no vertical asymptotes to concern ourselves with. Now let's find out what the horizontal asymptote is for the function. If you want to find out the horizontal asymptote, let's look at the limit as t approaches plus or minus infinity of the average cost function, 3,200 plus 250 times t plus 50 times t squared all divided by t. Notice if you plug in plus or minus infinity, you'll have an indeterminate form of infinity divided by infinity. So you can use L'Hopital's rule. So L apostrophe H for L'Hopital's rule. You take the derivative of the numerator, you take the derivative of the denominator, and then you find the ratio of the two different derivatives. So the derivative of the numerator is derivative of 3200 is zero, derivative of 250t is 250, and the derivative of 50t squared is 100 times t. The derivative of the denominator is derivative of t is one. So you have 250 plus 100 times t all divided by one, which is just 250 plus 100t. So notice if t is approaching plus or minus infinity, this limit will be also plus or minus infinity. So that means the y values are growing indefinitely large or indefinitely more and more negative. So we'll also have no horizontal asymptotes for this graph. Remember, if you want to find the y-intercept, it's when the independent variable is zero or t equals zero. t equals zero is not part of the domain though. So there is no y-intercept for this function either. If you want to find the x-intercepts or t-intercepts, you let the dependent variable y equals zero. So take the function c bar of t and set it equal to zero and now solve for t. So you have 3,200 plus 250 times t plus 50 t squared all over t as this fraction equals zero. So that means the numerator must be zero. 3,200 plus 250 times t plus 50 t squared set equal to zero. And now solve for t using factoring. So notice that all three terms have a 50 in common to factor it out as the greatest common factor or GCF. You have 50 times t squared left from the third term. You have a 5t from the middle term and you have a 64 from the first term. So 50 times the parentheses t squared plus 5t plus 64 all equal zero. So if this product is equal to zero, that means what's inside the parentheses must be zero. So t squared plus 5t plus 64 must be zero. This trinomial does not factor very easily, so you have to use the quadratic formula to solve for t. And if you use the quadratic formula, you'll find out that you'll have a square root of a negative number. So that means you have no real solutions. So that means no t intercepts for this graph either. So now that we've finished step one involving all the information we can obtain from c bar of t, the average cost function, let's move on to step two. Find the first derivative and all the information that we can gain from it. So find c bar prime of t. Since the average cost function was c bar of t is 3,200 plus 250 times t plus 50t squared all over t, 
you can divide each of these three terms up into three different fractions. So you have 3,200 divided by t, plus 250 times t divided by t, plus 50t squared divided by t. And now simplify each of the fractions. So 3,200 divided by t is 3,200t to the negative 1. We want to set this up so we can take the derivative more easily. 250 times t divided by t, the t's will cancel out and you have 250 left. And the third term, 50t squared divided by t, will give you 50t. So let's take the derivative of each term separately. So the first term, you have to keep the 3,200 as the coefficient. Now use the power rule to take the derivative of t to negative 1. So negative 1 comes down, that makes it negative 3,200. And now subtract 1 from the exponents, you'll get t to the negative 2. The derivative of 250 is 0, and the derivative of 50t is just 50. So your derivative will be 50 subtract 3200t to the negative 2 power. Now keep in mind that we want to find out where is the derivative undefined or where is the derivative of 0. So we need to simplify this derivative a little bit. So notice that you have a t to negative 2 that's really in the denominator of that second term. So you have 50 subtract 3200 divided by t squared. And now you need a common denominator so that you can add these two different terms together and make one fraction. So the LCD is t squared, so rewrite the first term as 50t squared divided by t squared. And the second term already has t squared in the denominator, so it's already fine. So 3200 divided by t squared. And now make it one fraction by subtracting the numerators. So you have 50t squared, subtract 3200 in the numerator, and keep the LCD as t squared. So now let's find out where is this derivative undefined. c bar prime of t, the derivative of the average cost function, is undefined when the denominator is zero. So that means t squared equals 0, or t equals 0 if you solve for t. And again, t equals 0 is not in the domain of the average cost function. We were only concerned with t greater than or equal to 1. So there is no critical number when t equals 0. But also keep in mind that c bar prime of t could be equal to 0. So where is the derivative of this fraction equal to 0? It's when the numerator is equal to 0. So that means 50t squared subtract 3,200 is equal to 0. And if you solve for t, notice that each term has a 50 in common, so you can factor out 50. And you have a t squared from the first term, you have 64 from the second term, so it's 50 times the quantity. t squared subtract 64, all equals 0. And t squared subtract 64 is a difference of two squares. So that means they will factor even further as 50 times t subtract 8 and t plus 8, all equals 0. And that means t equals 8 from the t minus 8 factor, and t equals negative 8 from the t plus 8 factor. So you have two different critical numbers. But again, notice that the domain is t greater than or equal to 1. So t equals negative 8 is not a critical number. Only t equals 8 is. And since the domain of the function was t greater than or equal to 1, and we only had t equals 8 was the critical number, let's make a sign chart for the first derivative of c bar of t. So we have 1 on the sign chart because that's involved with the domain of the function, c bar of t, and 8 was the critical number. So again, any values of t that's less than 1 is not part of the domain, so I'm just going to cross those out. I'm going to have 8 on the number line, so any values that are less than 8 but still greater than 1, and also values that are greater than 8 involved with this sign chart. So let's choose t equals 5 as a test value between 1 and 8, and let's choose t equals 10 for a test value that's greater than 8. So here was our derivative, c bar prime of t, the derivative of the average cost function was 50 subtract 3200 t to the negative 2 power. So let's plug in t equals 5 into the derivative to find out its sign. So c bar prime of 5 would be 50 minus 3,200, 5 to the negative 2 power. This will give you negative 78, which is a negative number. So on this interval between 1 and 8, the first derivative will be negative, which means that the original function, c bar of t, the average cost function, is decreasing. Now let's plug in t equals 10. If you plug in 10 into the derivative of the average cost function, you have c bar prime of 10 would be 50 subtract 3,200, and replace t with 10, so you have 10 to the negative 2. If you simplify this, you'll get positive 18. So that's greater than 0. That means that the sign of the derivative is a positive number, and that means the average cost function is increasing for t values greater than 8. So to summarize from the sign chart, we have the function, the average cost function, is decreasing on the interval 1 to 8, and the average cost function is increasing on the interval 8 to infinity. Also notice from the sign chart that since the function is decreasing on the left side of t equals 8 and it's increasing on the right side of t equals 8 and t equals 8 was a critical number, that means that you have a local minimum at t equals 8. So now let's find out what is the output value. What is the average cost when t equals 8? So c bar of 8, that's the original function, plug in 8. So you have 3,200 plus 250 times t, so that's now 250 times 8, plus 50 times t squared, so 50 times 8 squared, all divided by t, which is 8. If you simplify, you'll have 3,200 plus 2,000 
plus 3,200, all divided by 8. Or if you simplify, that's 1,050. So your average cost function is $1,050 when t equals 8. So the local minimum is y equals 1,050 when t equals 8. And the graph never changed from increasing to decreasing at a critical number, so there are no local maxima. So now let's move on to step 3. Find the second derivative, c bar double prime of t. So the derivative of the average cost function, c bar prime of t, was 50 subtract 3,200 t to the negative 2. So let's take the derivative of each term separately. The derivative of 50 was 0. And the derivative of the second term, you keep negative 3,200, and now take the derivative of t to negative 2 using the power rule. So negative 2 comes down. So negative 3,200 times negative 2 will give you positive 6,400. And now subtract 1 from the power on t, you get t to negative 3. So again, rewrite this as a fraction so that we can find out where is the second derivative undefined or equal to 0. So 6,400 stays in the numerator. t to negative 3 goes down to the denominator. It makes it t cubed. Again, notice that the second derivative will be undefined whenever the denominator is 0. So c bar double prime of t is undefined when t cubed equals 0, which means t must be 0. Again, t equals 0 is not in the domain of the average cost function, so ignore it as a partition number for the second derivative. And also, c bar double prime of t equals 0 gives you that this fraction is equal to 0. Well, that means 6,400 equals 0. The numerator equals 0. That doesn't make any sense. So this equation has no solution, and so there are no partition numbers for the second derivative at all. So what that means is that there will be no inflection points for the graph of c bar of t because the graph does not change from concave up to concave down or vice versa. But we still need to construct a sign chart for the second derivative because we want to find out what is the behavior of the graph. Is the graph concave up or is the graph concave down on the entire domain? So make a sign chart. Keep in mind that the values of t must be greater than or equal to 1, so let's include 1 on the sign chart. But there are no other values because we didn't have any partition numbers where, where the second derivative was 0 or the second derivative was undefined. So let's choose t equals 10. That's a nice test value that is greater than t equals 1. That value goes into the second derivative to find out is the second derivative positive or negative. So c bar double prime of t would be 6,400 divided by t cubed. Replace the t with 10. So you get 6,400 divided by 10 cubed, which is positive 6.4. So on this interval, the second derivative is a positive number, which means that the original function, the average cost function, is concave up. So the function c bar of t is concave up on the interval 1 to infinity, and the graph is never concave down. And let's finish up this problem by looking at step 4, sketch the graph of the average cost function c bar of t. So we have a couple points that we can actually plot on this graph. We know that the function starts when t equals 1. So let's plug in 1 into the average cost function. You have 3,200 plus 250 times t, so that's 250 times 1, plus 50 times t squared, so 50 times 1 squared, all divided by t, which is 1. If you simplify, you get 3,500. So whenever t equals 1, the y value is 3,500. That's where the graph will start. So looking at the graph, the graph will start at this point, 1 comma 3,500. We also had one more important point where the graph had a local minimum. We had a local minimum when t equals 8, and we plugged 8 into the original function, and we found out the y value was 1,050. So the local minimum will be at 8, 1,050. It's the local minimum for the graph. And we found out that there is no local maximum and there is no inflection points. There were no vertical asymptotes and there were no horizontal asymptotes at all. We also found out there was no t-intercept, so the graph never crosses the t-axis or the horizontal axis. And the graph never touches the y-axis because the values start when t equals 1. And now let's summarize the information that we obtained from the sign chart for the first and second derivatives. So between t equals 1 and t equals 8, the graph is decreasing, but also concave up because the graph is concave up from 1 to infinity. And then at t equals 8, the graph changes from decreasing to increasing, so the graph will be increasing and also concave up. So this is a sketch of the graph of the average cost function c bar of t, 3,200 plus 250 times t plus 50t squared, all divided by t. So now let's answer the second part of the problem. How long does it take before the average cost function per year to be at a minimum? It will take t equals 8 years before the function will realize a, a minimum value. And what is the minimum average cost per year? The minimum average cost would be $1,050. So it will take 8 years for the average cost function per year to reach a minimum. And the minimum value is $1,050. So to finish up this video, let's talk about the graphical behavior of the functions from the first and second derivatives. The following figure summarizes how the first and second derivatives affect the shape of the graph that we've seen in the previous sections. We know that a function will be differentiable so that you can find its derivative, and the graph may rise and fall from left to right. If the derivative y prime is positive, that means that the graph is increasing from left to right. 
If y prime is negative, that means that the graph is decreasing from left to right. If your second derivative is positive, that means that the function is concave up, no matter whether the graph increases or decreases. So the graph could be increasing and concave up, but the graph could be decreasing and concave up as well. If your second derivative is negative, that means that the original function is concave down. And again, no matter whether the graph is increasing or decreasing, it's concave down. So the graph could be increasing and concave down, or it could be decreasing and concave down. Wherever your second derivative changes sign is called an inflection point. So if the graph is concave up and then it changes to concave down, then this point where it changes is called an inflection point. And we also talked about where the first derivative changes sign. If the first derivative changes from increasing to decreasing, so if your first derivative is positive and then it changes to negative, then the critical point where the function changes from increasing to decreasing is called a local maximum, or vice versa. If the function is decreasing and it changes to increasing, so if your first derivative is negative and then it changes to positive, the critical point is a local minimum. So that was called the first derivative test, and then we also have the second derivative test. The second derivative test said if your first derivative is zero, and your second derivative is negative at the critical point, so that means your graph is concave down, and you have a horizontal tangent line at this critical point, the critical point must be a local maximum. So if y prime is equal to zero, and y double prime at the critical point is a positive number, so that means your graph is concave up, and you have a critical point, that means it must be a local minimum. So this finishes our video on the application of curve sketching involving the total cost and the average cost functions. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about how to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of a function.